Hi, this is Ricky from Virtualized Planet, and uh, today on the last day of VMworld, I'm here with Uniprint, uh, the guys from Uniprint. Uh, so, um, over to you. So, please tell me who you are and what you do for the organization. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Chris Halfway, and I'm the technical director for EMEA. So, my role is really looking which direction you should take the product, uh, taking customer feedback and with that one of the big things we're showing off here is Chromebook printer. Right, so okay. Maybe I can show you. Alright, so so you've been demonstrating a new feature is that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, what is that, uh, Chris? So, Chromebooks have, um, the, only, the only method of printing for Chromebooks at the moment is through Google, Google Print. So right. you have to send the documents to the Google server, they process it, and then they send it down to a printer you have set up on the Google Cloud. Right. If you don't want to send your documents to the Google Cloud, uh, what we have is a extension that can be plugged into the Chrome browser, and it can securely print your documents to a private print server. Right. So I'm sure that in action. Okay, yeah. So, so what you're saying is you've got an extension to the Chrome browser yeah. that allows you to essentially thin print, right? Yeah. Well, you could, yeah, so this will allow us to um, add in uh, Uniprint printers straight into the Chrome browser. And this can give us access to our Uniprint virtual print queue, which you know is for um, secure printing. Right. And I can send these, I can send my documents to that printer. So instead of going to Google's uh, cloud, now that's gone to your own private cloud and the job's been stored securely. Cool. So, you know, then we can go up to one of our release terminals and use our cards to identify, we can see the jobs we've got holding and we can print securely now from Chromebooks. This is secure printing uh, for the Chromebook, but keeping it in your private cloud or keeping it on just your network, and not having to send the data off to Google to be processed. Fantastic, fantastic. That's that's awesome, Chris. So, um, look, uh, how's the you know aside from what you're selling, how's the uh, event been for you? Yeah, you know, VMware is a VM will is a great event. Uh, meet up with people, see what new technologies yeah. uh, are coming. Um, I, I I love storage, so there's some guys uh, by Lynn, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of flash-based storage, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Chris, I have to say that Violin doesn't sponsor my website, so uh, maybe we shouldn't talk about those guys, right? Okay. Uh, but uh, what did you think of the band last night? Oh, brilliant. I'm a massive Faithless fan. Uh, yeah. A little bit husky this yeah, yeah. morning. Yeah, me maybe too, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was fun, at me explaining to uh, the Americans who Faithless was, because yeah. none of the Americans appreciated no. that Faithless is like the biggest dam dance band in Europe, right? Exactly. Uh, but uh, hopefully they got a good gist of that. Brilliant. So um, one last question, yes. you know, thank you for your time, Chris. But uh, uh, anything you caught your eye? Any key key takeaways from VMworld? Um, I would say it's, it's, it's always good just to take on the new technology. I mean, well, we're a printing company. Yeah. But we always, you know, the, the software extends past that. So it's great to see what VMware are doing. Infrastructure-wise, yeah. storage, yeah. management, well, everything. Let's see how it all comes together. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Chris, and uh, enjoy the rest thank of your day. You. Hi, this is Ricky from Virtualized Planet, and uh, today I'm actually going to be talking to the guys from VM Turbo. Uh, but uh, without further ado, over to you. Uh, please tell me who you are and what you do for the organization. Hi, guys. My name's Asim. I'm one of the senior system engineers at VM Turbo. Okay, all right. So, uh, how long have you been with the company? About three months now. Yeah, I, I think I've met you before somewhere. Do we know each other from another life? Yeah, yeah. We know, I know you for a long time, Ricky. We've been together previously. <laughs> long history. All right, so, uh, you know, just give the, the viewers uh, an idea of what VM Turbo does. Okay, so VM Turbo is an application performance control platform. Yeah. Uh, what we can do is basically look at your virtual machines, size them, place them, make sure you've got capacity in real time on private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, on all these different platforms here, so very broad range of platform support, cool. very, very cool right. products, yeah, have a yeah. look at it. Yeah. Oh, you, so you, I know you've got you've got Docker support there as well. Yeah, we can do some yeah. cool stuff with Docker and, and Amazon as well. Cool. Amazon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
OpenStack, we also contribute back to OpenStack, so anyone looking at OpenStack should also right. have a look at VM Turbo. Right, okay, OpenStack as well. I mean, that's the one thing we're interested in at work, and, you know, maybe that we'll have a separate discussion about that later, right? But, um, um, okay, so, uh, anything new? Any new secrets? Yeah, we've just added Nutanix support, actually, which oh, is quite cool. New, Nutanix, so okay. Some interesting stuff there around hyperconvergence. And okay. Looking at, um, you know, the, the SSD or the cache tier. Yeah. Uh, and moving things around to make sure that, as much as possible, the VMs are specifically using that cache tier. Right. The cache tier doesn't get too full. Okay, well, as you know, see, my brother works for Simplivity, new, the Nutanix competitor. Yep. Do you think you'll add those kind of people later? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the way we work is that if we see uh, an opportunity with a customer yeah. and they specifically want us to support something, yeah. we can generally plug into any new uh, technology in, in about a quarter, so you know, less than three months. Oh, that's because awesome. the abstraction is so uh, unique. And, and complete, yeah. it's very easy for us to plug in new platforms. I mean, that's awesome. Okay, thank you, Asim. So, thank you for your time. But let me ask you, if it, you know, off the off the record questions like, okay. did you see Faithless last night? Unfortunately, I didn't. We had a team, we had a team meal. Uh, that's boring. Randomly in a yeah. chef's house. Right. Which was yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. All right. So, uh, any key takeaways from also, VMworld? No, we're not allowed in to see Faithless. Only the uh, attendees are allowed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what? I I know that routine where people swap badges even I did it once right yeah right so um, any key takeaways this week uh, no, good show obviously there's some interesting stuff around containers uh, networking and stuff so I'd say that um, have a look at VM Turbo I would say trial it very very easy to use yeah cool. technology thank you Asim thank you so much cheers Ricky okay cheers bye bye Hi, this is Ricky from Virtualized Planet, and uh, today I'm here with the guys from Zerto. This is the last day of VMworld, and uh, so uh, let me send it over to Ver Zerto guys. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do for the company. Yes, absolutely. So my name is Heisman uh, Johnson Pro. I am the uh, solutions engineer uh, working in Benelux and Nordics. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically technical kind of part of our sales uh, guys. Yeah, right, okay. So what does Zerto do exactly, just for the viewers? So Zerto is basically hypervisor based replica. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of using replication to storage devices, we actually took the replication into the hypervisor right. um, and made it storage agnostic, but also hypervisor agnostic. So okay, cool. VMware Hyper-V, Hyper-V yeah. VMware, right. uh, but also version agnostic, so yeah. it doesn't need to be the same VMware versions on both sides. Okay, so what about Amazon? Uh, do you support Amazon as well? Yes, absolutely. We introduced yeah. Amazon support in May of this year. Right. Uh, so, VMware Hyper-V to Amazon Web Services. So, uh, I heard a kind of a cool feature, you know, about the Amazon side of things. Is it true that you can replicate to S3 storage first, and then, uh, when there's a failure, you can switch over to EC2, and the idea with that is you're saving the customers a lot of money in, in compute. Is that true? Absolutely. So, what we do? So normally we replicate from side A to side B in a VMware case, repli yeah. replicating directly into Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to do that to Amazon, I mean, there's the cost for it. So EBS volumes are a lot more expensive than S3 storage. Yeah. So what we do with uh, uh, Amazon is actually we can replicate the I.O. directly into S3. So yeah. As soon as you need to do a failover, we will convert those S3 uh, blocks yeah. to a EBS volume. Okay, cool. So, look, uh, any secret new features that you want to tell me about? So, we are announcing final recovery out of our journal. We're using journal technology. Wow. Journal technology is basically right. logging all the I.O. Yep. and placing checkpoints in those I.O. So, the checkpoints are basically points in time you can fill over to. Right, yeah. Um, and we can do that with seconds granularity. Right. So, uh, when adding final recovery to that, it's yeah. a really powerful feature. Yeah. You don't need to boot up any VMs. It's directly from the journal. And with that second point, the time yeah. Cool. A bit like CBT, that kind of concept where you're just taking the journal, the, the, the metadata, the changes at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's, it's on I.O. level. So we actually right. log each I.O. So each new I.O. that gets sent from the VM, yeah, yeah. we log that into a, uh, a journal. Yeah. Uh, that allows us to do all the recovery to the points in time cool. on an I.O. level. Right. So, okay, so thank you for the Zerto pitch. Did you go to the Faithless concert last night? Actually, no. Oh, no! So my full pass, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gave it to someone else so they could go. 
I went to the Fabulous concert. No. Oh, well, well done you, and yeah, uh, commiserations you. Oh, right, okay. Man. So I heard you went on some catamaran or something like that around the. Uh, Actually, harbor. You I missed had, that one as well. I had to stop. <laughs> okay. All right. What? Well, right. So one last question. Yeah. Any key takeaways you got from VMworld this year? The theme is ready for any, right? Right, yeah. Um, we've been saying that for a couple of years now. Yeah. And, but you get the, so when I talk to people, they are actually looking at anything right now. They're looking at more true hybrid. Yeah. They're looking at using actually multiple hypervisors. As well. Yeah. So it's actually they're talking about any. We can do any hypervisor, any stack. Yeah. Um, so I, I think people are really moving forward to the whole hybrid cloud thing. Right. Um, yeah. But also looking for the workload mobility to that cloud. So how can I switch loads? That's most of the conversations are about that. I mean, you know, myself, I actually work, aside from blogging, I actually work for one of the biggest service providers in the world and, and those are the kind of challenges that we have day in, day out. So, yes. look, anyway, guys, thank you so much for your time Welcome. and uh, great to see you at VMworld. Okay. Hi, this is Ricky from Virtualized Planet and uh, today I'm here with Pernix Data on the last day of VMworld and, uh, uh, well, over to you. Please tell me who you are and what you do for the organization. Hi, Ricky. Uh, I'm James Smith. I work for Pernix Data, as you can see. And and uh, I'm a pre-sales engineer, so I'm uh, doing the technical side of our sales process. Okay, so what does Pernix Data do exactly, just for the viewers? Yeah, Pernix Data is a uh, storage acceleration technology for VMware, so we allow you to change the way your VMs talk to the underlying shared storage right, yeah. to gain huge improvements in your performance by okay. using server-side resources. All right, okay, so pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, do you, I mean, is there any secret announcements you've made this week or any any goodies you can tell us? Yeah, so no, not secrets, such. We don't like to keep too many secrets. Uh, we want people to know what we're doing. Uh, we have sort of been talking about our version 3 product, which came out recently on our acceleration product. Right. We've also, uh, are really, I suppose, announcing on the show um, our a new product called Architect, which uh, yeah. takes the technology and uh, allows uh, our um, users to really understand what's going on with the storage there, which we, you know, talking to them actually is a very difficult thing to do. Right, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, I mean, off topic a little bit, did you go to see Faithless last night? <laughs> I didn't, I have to admit. I, oh, uh, I no. I went to the party for a very short time. Right. Uh, but uh, other commitments, so uh, I left and I didn't see Faithless. I'm afraid. Right. Sounds like well, good though. Well, you missed out there, James. Yeah. You know, and the UK's big, biggest dance band, you missed it, mate. <laughs> so, okay, last question then, James. Uh, any key takeaways, anything caught your eye from VMworld? Um, yeah, you know what, Ricky? Uh, Really, the storage has been a big thing, uh, right. and all the various types. And obviously, one of the big things, topics of the show, has been the, the big announcements made uh, last week and you know during this week about the uh, Dell and EMC. But no, right. I mean, from my point of view, there's been a lot of discussion around storage. And the great thing for us is, it sounds like we're still doing something that's unique but very interesting to people we're talking to. So, I mean, there's a lot of. Uh you know, hype about hybrid capabilities, and even VMware themselves have recognized Amazon as a cloud provider themselves. Uh, I mean, I work for a large service provider, uh, and that's something of interest to us. Do you think Pernix will, you know, reach into that market as well in the future? Um, well, you know, our technology, we, we do a very small part of our ecosystem. You know, we're in an yeah. enabler for providing forks that normally would be very, very expensive to do. Which, yeah. You know, that, that equates to then an expensive service. Yeah. Um, you know, because something has to pay for it in the end. So we already have, you know, service providers, cloud providers using Chronix data in their data centers to yeah. allow them to give a much better level of service to their end users at a very effective cost point. Sure. So, um, you know, we won't be doing it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but we, we're going to make use of the cloud ourselves as an organization as well. You know, yeah. we have some uh, technologies that tie into our products and allow us to capture data and then share it with our customers in the future right. um, to help them make design decisions. So sure. we're going to be doing clouds, we yeah. enable clouds. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but we can use the cloud ourselves as well. All right. Thank you so much, James. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Good to see you. Good to see you.